Hey there, I'm Matt Pinder, author of Beyond the Automobile and professional transportation engineer. I'm excited to share with you today what I consider to be one of Canada's most important protected intersections built to date, the intersection of Laurier Avenue and Nicholas Street in Ottawa, Ontario. Let's start by talking about why this intersection is so important for Ottawa's transportation network. First, for people on foot, this intersection connects downtown to the University of Ottawa via the Laurier Avenue Bridge. This means a lot of students crossing here to get to class. There's also a major pathway connection to the Rideau Canal from this intersection, which is a major tourist draw in the summer and the winter when it becomes the world's longest outdoor skating rink. Despite all this, before construction, pedestrians had very few protection measures through the intersection, contending with a slip lane on one corner and one side where crossing wasn't even allowed. Next, this intersection forms a key link in Ottawa's cycling network. Laurier is Ottawa's first physically separated bikeway running through downtown, and before this project, eastbound cyclists had a floating bike lane traveling through this intersection, mixing with a high volume of right turning traffic. In addition to connecting to the Rideau Canal pathway, cyclists can also connect through here to reach the Confederation Line pathway, which runs southeast along the LRT corridor and is separated from traffic for its entire length. Speaking of traffic, this is also a major vehicle intersection. It's the first signal at the end of a freeway spur and a natural place for congestion to occur. Before the pandemic, over 44,000 cars a day went through this intersection, 13% of which were trucks. The intersection forms a major route into downtown via Laurier Street and carries a huge amount of freight traffic to and from Quebec via Ottawa's Lower Town neighborhood. And finally, we can't forget about transit. Even though Ottawa's main LRT line actually runs underground through this area, there's a lot of buses using the intersection. Waller Street, north of Laurier, is reserved exclusively for buses, and many end-of-route buses serving both Ottawa and neighboring Gatineau loop through the Nicholas intersection. So what do you do when you have a big urban intersection performing critical functions for all modes of travel and a chance to rebuild it to be safer for everyone? Well, if you're the city of Ottawa, you build a protected intersection. The city started consulting on the design back in 2019 and construction finally took place in 2022 with the intersections of Laurier Nicholas and nearby Laurier Waller being delivered as part of a $5.6 million contract to renew the roads in the area. So let's talk about how things have changed. First, the eastbound floating bike lane has been removed. Eastbound cyclists now stay against the curb and go into the boulevard before entering the corner with a raised cycle track, providing a place to wait that's well ahead of drivers. Westbound cyclists no longer have to contend with a slip lane, which is gone, and cycling connections to and from the Rideau Canal are also better, with protected intersection corners making it much easier for cyclists to turn left with two-stage crossings rather than brave the intersection in the left turn lanes. Cyclists connecting to the Confederation Line pathway can now easily reach this route by traveling east to Waller on the race cycle tracks and using the new protected intersection there. Pedestrian safety has also been massively improved. Right turns on red are prohibited at all times for all movements. And even better, the South Crosswalk, which conflicts with a huge volume of right turning cars, is now fully separated from car traffic. Right turning drivers have their own signal, which overlaps with the northbound left turn movement for efficiency, and two right turn lanes are provided to manage the high volumes. On the other three crossings where turns are allowed, while pedestrians are crossing, the protected intersection corners give a lot of safety benefit by giving pedestrians a head start into the intersection and making them very visible to turning drivers. Finally, all left turns are either fully protected or not permitted at all, meaning there will be no left hook collisions here. This, of course, is a safety benefit for drivers too. The design is not perfect. On the north side of the intersection, right turns are allowed at the same time as bikes and pedestrians, and I noticed even on a weekend, there were a lot of big buses and trucks turning here. I even caught a near miss while filming. 
I hope that the city will consider separating this signal movement as well in future. Overall, the intersection is significantly improved from its prior state. Though it's still a major traffic route and definitely not a place to stand around and enjoy the weather, the comfort and the safety of the crossings here are significantly improved over previous conditions. Big intersections like this exist all over the place, and while it may be difficult to make most of them smaller, it's a lot easier to make them safer with physical treatments and signal measures. Thanks for watching through to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed my recap of this significantly improved intersection, and stay tuned for more to come.